Good afternoon, <coughs> and thank you for the MC and CBH to, uh, to invite me here. Um, I'll take it to sort of a, a completely different subject, and um, something which for all people who are not involved in tax, their, their primary reaction is tax is boring. Um, I'll, I'll try to, to disprove that, uh, that, that idea, but I'm not sure what I can. But still, it should be of interest to you because um, uh, there is a, a huge correlation between taxation and investments and trade. So <coughs> getting things going in, in trade is often depending on how the infrastructure of, of taxation is. And the reason I'm here is that there is some developments on, on, this, uh, on this issue, uh, which may be of interest to the uh, bilateral relation between the Netherlands and, uh, and uh, Colombia. <coughs> I, I've been personally involved in the negotiations uh, on a uh, double tax uh, convention between the Netherlands and Colombia. Uh, negotiations have been ongoing for, for some while. <coughs> um, now, I'll, I'll tell a little bit about that, but I can't disclose the contents of this treaty because it will only be disclosed when it's signed, so uh, you have to keep your uh, uh, curiosity uh, tempered for a while. Uh, what I will do is tell you something about uh, double tax conventions on the assumption that you are not tax specialists. Um, so it gives you some idea of what, what they are about, what their, what their function is, and why they are often necessity for improving uh, trade relations, business relations, and eventually uh, are of mutual, for mutual purpose or mutual benefit of both contracting states, and why it's, it's a good thing to have. Um, and doing so, I will tell you about what our governments from the Netherlands and, and the government of Colombia, uh, what their idea was of entering into negotiations on such a treaty, and why it's Vision, what they're trying to achieve. Um, and I will tell you something that I think uh, my belief is what will probably will be going on in the, in the near future on this. And I will also tell us something about the free trade agreement that has already been mentioned by the, the earlier speakers on the, between the European Union and the Colombia group, and on some upcoming customs agreements between them and Colombia, which will be like the icing on the cake uh, on the FTA. As, as, as I said, uh, assuming you're not tax specialist, what is that with all tax conventions? What are they about? Um, just imagine, to keep it simple, uh, a Dutch company uh, having a subsidiary in Colombia producing goods, and the goods are being sold by the subsidiary in Colombia to the Netherlands parent company to be uh, sold all over the world, for instance. You would want to make sure that the pricing between the Netherlands company and its Colombian subsidiary, that there is no double taxation there, that both governments feel that the pricing is correct. Or just take yourself, say you work for a Dutch company and you are being sent to Colombia for a longer period of time, will you have to pay tax in Colombia and in Netherlands on that salary? Well, in both countries, that would be double taxation. Well, that is what tax treaties are about. They are trying to attribute taxing rights between the two contracting states to make sure that taxpayers, be it individuals, be it companies, only pay tax in one country. So that's the main purpose of a, a double tax convention, is to make sure that you have only got to pay tax in one country. How do they do that? They, they have rules which are, to a certain large extent, standardized uh, in attributing taxing rights to either the country where the taxpayer is a resident of, so where he lives, or the country where he is actually earning his income, uh, mostly referred to as source state. And th there's this whole kind of economic activities you can think of, be it investments, be it uh, income from uh, real estate, uh, be it uh, even income of, uh, of a flying, uh, like uh, Avianca or KLM. Uh, where do you make your profit if you fly between both countries? Do you have to pay tax in, in both? Or what do you do with the income which is earned in disguise? 
things like that. So <clears throat> all kinds of income you can think of are covered by such a convention. It's a very uh, common feature in the world. There are over 3,300 and so treaties between all the countries in the world. The Netherlands are, are one of the main suppliers. We have uh, like, like 92 treaties in, in force at this stage. Uh, so we, are, we have a big treaty network. Colombia is still in the early stages of building its tax treaty network. So that's uh, it, it's a new field for uh, Colombian uh, authorities. Um, State Secretary Wakers, my, my political boss, um, went to uh, Colombia in the last few days of March and he met with uh, uh, Deputy Minister Manchuaga, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, and both countries expressed their interest in uh, getting the ongoing negotiations on a double tax treaty uh, finalized, so we're working on that. And it's good to know that both governments actually want this. First point, I mean, it's attribution of taxing rights, so make sure that it's only taxing one, one place, but it's also about the sourcing, source rules on taxation. And the Colombian tax system has many source rules on taxation, and that may be detrimental for investors. Why is that so? Uh, because without boring with you with the economics of it, uh, it turns out in practice that if a country has high source tape, Source taxation, um, it's eventually it's being borne by the people who uh, use the economic agent which is taxed. To give an example, if a bank provides a loan to a uh, person or a company and there is a source, ta source tax on the interest which is paid, then the person who is actually lending the money will gross up the interest rate to make sure that after taxation he receives an adequate reward for the money he is lending. And that will make borrowing money more expensive. And that is, well, that, that sounds to reason, I think, means that investments or borrowing money to, to make your investments uh, is more expensive. Same goes for services. One, one typical system I taught the Colombian tax system is that uh, you have a source state taxation on technical service fees. So even a Netherlands uh, consultant uh, who is supplying services to Colombian clients without <coughs> selling a foot in Colombia uh, faces for each euro he earns, he faces a 33% holding tax. Uh, that is scaring off uh, activities and that makes getting this activity more expensive because if you want to have somebody with agricultural knowledge to improve uh, the, the efficiency or the, the standards of agricultural production or if you want to have a, a consultant who is specialized in, in developing uh, port facilities, he will grow up his uh, his fees to make sure that he is getting the net income he wants. So it makes it more expensive to get those investments going. And your, your government, the Colombian government, knows this. So they're working on this. So mitigation of taxation at source is another item of which a treaty uh, tries to achieve. <coughs> and on the other hand, it means that if you agree that one country has a right to tax, that the other country should step back and eliminate the double taxation. And that's also something which a treaty, uh, a tax treaty does. Then there's another side to it. We want to make sure that there is no dodgy things going on, that people uh, do pay the tax they are uh, due. And to get like people who are actually trying to evade taxation, there's also rules in taxation. The main thing would be exchanging information, making sure that both governments have the adequate information on what is going on. So that's something which a treaty does as well. We made these specific rules to, abuse, to, to counter abuse, but then we get into the details of, of, of tax rules. I won't bore you with that, but know that it's there. Another good thing about tax treaties is that it provides uh, legal certainty. And one thing investors want desperately is legal certainty. And Colombia has a good track record. When you see, uh, I, I'm, I'm not as 
good in statistics as the, the, the previous speakers were, but I, I know that uh, Colombia has a good track record as a stable uh, legal system. That uh, your, the chances are that if you go to court that it will get uh, a good result, that contracts are honored. Uh, so the, the legal system in Colombia is working, uh, is working satisfactorily. And legal certainty is what, what taxpayers and invest investors want. And on the area of tax, there is much to be gained still, so they're really going to do good work. And this sets, set of rules will encourage cross-border investment and trade. 